So in the previous video, we had a look at adding in uh, the ability to log in. And in this video, we're going to be looking at adding in the ability to log out and also to create new users and, and basically just kind of flesh out the rest of our user service so that we can start to connect to it via the API gateway. And in order to do this, we're going to add in just one dependency over here. So I'm going to split my window over into two and I'm going to go into user service. And I'm going to add in lodash.emit. I'm going to show you what this uh, is used for in just a second, but let me just quickly explain here if you haven't used Lodash dot something before. So you can install Lodash, which is kind of everything included in one. You can also install Lodash ES, which is like an ES module version. And there's like a whole uh, webpack topic to be discussed about that. But you can also install Lodash dot and the individual uh, functions that you like to use. And this is generally my preferred method now because I'm kind of moving away from using Lodash, uh, I guess, a lot. I generally prefer to use Ramda wherever possible. And well, even beyond that, you know, just writing your own code to kind of, uh, if you can do it in like, you know, extra line or two, then you don't need to include Lodash. Um, but in these cases with stuff like emit, I do like to kind of still uh, include it and install it. So I try to install it one by one, like so. Um, anyways, so I've got that one over here and we're going to go back into server routes. And now underneath this uh, post sessions one we've got over here, I'm going to add in another one uh, for delete. So I'm going to be deleting a session and this one uh, corresponds to the ability to log out. So I'm going to have something like this set up over here. Basically, you can delete a certain session and that will uh, obviously log you out. Um, and we're going to do a try here. And then once again, catch error and then return next with the error um, like so. And we're going to do const user session. And this time we're going to use a user session repository. So I'm just going to get that set up over here as well. So we have the user repository and user session. So you can copy that name over there and we're going to paste that over here, uh, await, paste that over here and then find one request.params.session ID, which is uh, this one here in the URL. And we're going to do, if we cannot find it, then we're going to uh, return an error, new error, uh, invalid session ID like so. And then we're going to do await user session repository dot remove user session. So this is how you remove a row once you have already selected it, is we're going to use the repository to remove it like so. And then we're just going to do return res dot end. So this will send a status 200 and basically just kind of tells us that this part here is done and we're good to go. So this here is the logout functionality done. And uh, at this stage, yeah, we can't really confirm. Well, actually we can confirm that this works. Uh, and the way to do that is let's first uh, go into uh, Insomnia, which I need to open, just give me a second. Let's go uh, into VS code. We're just going to do Docker compose up. And let's go into Chrome here. Uh, and we're going to load up PHP my admin so we can actually see uh, that session be created and destroyed. So let's first have a look inside user sessions. And right now here, I've got nothing, uh, but I'm gonna go into Insomnia here. I'm going to create a session. So I'm going to press send and hopefully that should create it for us over here as well. Oh, it seems like for some reason, it's not actually adding it into the table. So actually, this means that our insert into user session line didn't actually work properly. Hmm. So the reason it actually isn't working is because we don't have dot execute here at the end. So I totally forgot to write that, but now I've added that over here and it should have just uh, restarted over there. So we're going to just wait for that to restart one more time just to confirm it is working. Uh, and now let's go into insomnia, send this one one more time. And now let's go into here and you see we have our row inserted. Now, once this is done, we're going to go uh, into insomnia again, grab this ID, I'm going to copy that and we're going to uh, just duplicate this one and turn this one to log out. Uh, and then for log out here, we're going to do delete. We're going to remove this body because we don't need it. It's going to send uh, nobody and we're going to put the ID over here at the end. So now if you save this, uh, you send that over there, you see we get 200 and now over here, this one here is gone. So that tells you that this one here is working properly and our delete is done. So now that this is done, we're going to add in the functionality to actually uh, see the current session based upon a session ID. So this one's going to be very similar to this. We can actually just copy uh, and put it down here. This one's going to be dot get. Um, and this part here is going to remain the same, but instead of removing it and returning nothing, we're going to get rid of that and do res.json and we're going to return the user session like so. So now that we've got this here, let's just wait for it to restart one more time. And it should be restarting soon if it already, there we go. Let's wait for that to happen. And now that that's done, we can go uh, back over here and we're going to try logging in. So send that one. And then we're going to grab this ID and we're going to uh, create a new one again. We'll call this one get session. Uh, this is going to be type get um, and then nobody here. 
and this one's going to be forward slash session with that at the end. And you see, we get back our session. If we change that C to a D, you notice that we get invalid session ID because this one's based upon the table. So now that we have this one set up and also the delete functionality, we're going to add in one more and this one will allow us to create users. So app dot post and then forward slash users. So like I said, we're going to keep that same uh, rest protocol adherence here. So slash users there like so, and we're going to check for the username and the password. So if those aren't provided, then we're going to return a new error which is invalid body uh, and we're going to try it and then do a catch again at the end so catch error return next with the error there like that and we're going to do const new user is equal to and we're going to generate uh, a uuid there and for the password hash we're going to hash the password we don't have this yet so we do need to write that up um, and this basically allows us to hash it before we send it, obviously. And then username here is going to be request.body.username there like so. Uh, so now let's grab this hash password and let's create that file inside of helpers. So hash password.ts. And now inside of this file here, we're just going to do import bcrypt. So we're going to use that same library we used last time, uh, but this one is going to obviously hash the password. So we're going to pass in a password, which is going to be a string. And we're going to do bcrypt.hash sync and then password and then do bcrypt dot gen salt sync 12. So this is the number of rounds that the salt is going to be uh, actually run. And I think, I believe it kind of hashes upon itself 12 times. And that purposely makes it a little bit slower, which then in turn makes it harder to decrypt, or I guess harder to, uh, not to decrypt, sorry, harder to brute force. For example, if it takes 10 milliseconds for the uh, for a hash to be computed, then in one second, a hacker could compute on one device 100 uh, of these hashes. But then if it takes 100 milliseconds, they can only compute 10. And then, you know, if you kind of add that up uh, in, into a larger scale when you're brute forcing, it can literally take 10 times or, you know, 20 times longer, which is a huge deal when you're already, you know, taking, for example, a couple years here. So um, this is really nice. And this is how we kind of increase security. So Bcrypt generally works quite well. There are definitely uh, other things and I'm by no means an expert in cryptography, but this is my understanding of the hash and I believe it works quite well. So now that we've got hash password over there, we're just going to include it here. So this one's gonna be hash password there like so. I'm gonna grab hash password and uh, I've already got that there actually. So now here we're just going to do await connection dot create query runner a query builder here again, and then insert into uh, this time into user, and then dot values the new user, and we're going to make sure we execute it at the end there, and we're going to return res dot json, um, and now this one we can return, but the problem is that we don't want to return it with the password hash. So I'm going to show you what happens if I just do new user here like this, and now that we've got this written up, we can go back into Insomnia and let's try to create one uh, for sign up. Of sign up there. And this one, let's just do Lucas2, for example. And this one here should be users. Uh, and then we're going to press send. And now you see it actually returns the password hash. And like I said, this isn't good. We try our best not to expose that. And that's where this um, uh, emit function comes in handy that we installed earlier. So we're going to do import emit from lodash.emit. Uh, and this one here also needs a type as well. So yarn add hyphen d at types lodash.emit like so. Uh, and once that is installed, we can now see that line disappear. Good. Uh, and now let's go back down here. And instead of just doing user session, sorry, not this one, uh, inside this one here, we're going to do omit new user and we're going to omit password hash from it so that we don't accidentally return that. So now let's go over here and let's try, let's actually try to do Lucas2 again. And you see, we actually get an error because Lucas2 already is uh, is a username. So now let's try to do user3. So this is our unique username uh, thing that we're enforcing now. But now you see, we've got this one here. For some reason, it's still returning that. And I think it's because it didn't properly restart. So I'm just going to um, make sure this one restarts. And sometimes it does that, which is quite annoying. But, um, but yeah, you kind of, sometimes you do get things like this. I do believe we can do Docker Compose restart uh, users service and it should restart that for us. Uh, and once it is restarted, I do believe this will fix the problem. So it's gonna give that a second to do that. Cool, so now it's uh, running in this orange color here, but we're just gonna wait for that uh, TS node dev to run properly. And now that it's running up again, and let's try Lucas4, and now you see the password hash should be gone. So we've got the ID, username, and created that, and we don't return the password hash, um, but by no means does that mean we don't create it. You see, we still have that over here. So there you go. Now that we have uh, all of this set up, we have the uh, ability to register users, uh, to get the current session, and also to log out now as well. So now our work inside of user service is done for now. We have a basic kind of uh, authentication package all set up over here. And now in the next video, we're going to be looking at linking this up via the API gateway.